I'm Brother Christopher. I'm the prior of the monks of New Ski, and I'm also the director of the training program here at the monastery. And I'm Mark Goldberg from ChicagoDogTrainer.com. Along with Brother Christopher, we've written a book called Let Dogs Be Dogs, and we think that you'll enjoy it. Hopefully you've even read it by now. What we're going to do in this video is unpack for you the features of one of the e-collars that both of us use in our respective programs. It's called the Mini Educator 300. What we're going to do is literally unpack the box and describe for you the various features so that you'll have a good understanding of how to use it properly. Once you've worked with a professional dog trainer like Brother Christopher or myself, the mini educator or an e-collar in general is a great way of gently interrupting dog behavior that we don't like so that we can guide your dog back to the behavior that you can actually reward for. It's also a very effective teaching tool for ordinary obedience. It's very gentle and we have both found it to be a real helpful tool in our daily work. So let's take a look and see what's inside the box. Now what we're going to do is turn on the remote. We're simply going to reverse to the rear side, look for the big button that has L on it, and you're going to press and hold that button. When you do so, the LED screen will come on. It will light up. To turn on the collar, what you're going to do is find the red dot on the face of the collar and then you're going to match that with the red dot on the side of the remote. When you join them together, the green light goes on, they engage magnetically, and the green light flashes every six seconds to indicate that it is functioning properly and properly charged. The remote is on, however, it goes into power saving mode whenever you haven't used it for a moment. So anything that you touch or do to the, to the remote will turn on the blue light again. Uh, I'm pointing that out so that you can see we have a battery indicator and it, right now it is blinking green. And on the collar, the battery indicator is also blinking green. These guys will blink either green, orange, or red, depending on battery condition. They mean what you think they mean, and you probably won't need to charge them up more than once a week. We'll show you later how you charge them. So I'm taking this out of power saving mode by just twisting the dial a little bit. We're going to talk about all these other components more in a moment. But right now, I want to show you the M and the C right on this dial. Now when it goes into power saving mode like this, it goes dark again, but it's still ready to roll. Now that M and C is a programming function controlled by this little M slash C button. And what it means is that this button here is momentary and this button is continuous or constant. Again, it comes packed in the M and the C mode, controlled by that button. For the time being, we're going to recommend that you leave it alone in this programming mode, but we're going to go through all these functions in just a moment. Here you're looking at the intensity setting. This is controlled by the intensity dial. You'll see as I twist it, the intensity begins to rise. Now the lowest number set here is zero, which means it won't transmit any electrical impulse at all. If we dial it all the way up, it goes to high, which stands for 100. In our style of training, we keep this really low in order to keep your dog comfortable, and we suggest that you do the same. There are three buttons on the side of the unit that you need to understand. On my right, you have the red button, which is the constant button, and the black button, which is the momentary button. 
On the opposite side, you have the vibration button. It's single. It's, only, uh, it's the only button on that side. When you press the red button, as I'm doing right now, the screen lights up. There's an indication that a stim is being delivered for as long as you keep your finger depressed. The black button, the momentary button, is only a tenth of a second impulse. Notice if I keep my finger pressed, it only delivers that tenth of a second impulse. On the other side is the vibration button. When I press this, notice that it simply gives equivalently a vibration in the unit. It's not an electric stim. It's much like a cell phone going off in your pocket. Now we know that this is the momentary electronic button and this is the constant electronic button. We know that our intensity level is set for 9. So if we push the momentary button, we're going to get that real quick little flash of electric at 9. It's very quick and this is set very low. It's a number we often use. If we tap the uh, constant button, we're also getting level 9, just a little bit longer dose of that electric stimulation to get the dog's attention. There is an advanced feature though that we need you to know about, which is if you were to push these two buttons together at the precise same time, you will notice that it is now stimulating at level 14. That's just in case you need to tap your dog a little bit harder if he has uh, taken off after a squirrel. Again, more advanced technique, but there's some technology in here we need you to know. Now that boost is owner programmable. More information about that is in the owner's manual. The Mini Educator has a nice feature to it which allows you to lock the level at which you have it set. To do so, you simply depress the control dial down. When that smile lights up and then goes off, the level on the screen is locked. If you try to manipulate the level up or down, it will not move. It's frozen at the particular level you have it set. To unlock it, you simply depress the control dial down, and now it is back to its normal functioning. On the back of the remote control was that on-off button that we used to turn the remote control on. And you'll recall it was a very long, like a one Mississippi push to turn this guy on. However, it also says light right here as a function, and in fact it has an L printed on the button. There is a light that you can light up right on the screen, so if your dog is wearing the collar at night, one quick little tap of the on-off button turns on a flashing light, a second tap of that same button turns on a solid light, a third tap, and you have cycled all the way through the lights. You may find that useful if you turn your dog out into the yard at night and don't want him eating your mulch. Now we're ready to turn off the remote control. Remember the on-off button that we used to turn the remote on? Well, we're going to push and hold in order to turn the remote off. When we push and hold, it lights up, and when it goes completely dim, we know it has been turned off. Now there's no information in the LED screen. The remote control is off. We're now ready to turn off the collar. We're going to do it by reversing the process we used to turn the collar on. We simply find the little red dot, which has a magnet in it, on the edge of the remote control. We touch it to the corresponding red dot on the collar. We got a little red flash. Now this guy is dead as a doornail. Both pieces are off and in battery saving mode. When it's time to recharge your unit, you simply take the battery charger, which comes in the box, uh, and notice that it has two jacks. Take one of the jacks, and we're going to insert it in the remote. So I'll turn it on its reverse side, and you'll notice that there is a rubber flap. You lift the rubber flap, and it reveals a port. Insert the jack into the port, like so. Then, for charging the collar, you look on the underside and there's a rubber flap that when you lift, 
also reveals a port. Simply insert the jack into that port, like so, and then you take the battery charger and put it into a wall socket. It will give you approximately 30 to 35 hours for a fully charged unit. The unit comes with two sized contact points, shorter and longer, depending on how hairy your dog is. Okay, if your dog has a short or tight coat, you'll be using short contact points. If your dog has a thick or long coat, you'll most likely be using the longer contact points. We're simply going to show you how to change those contact points uh, if you should need to. You take the wrench that comes with the, uh, with the unit and you just simply put it over the contact point like so. You do it horizontally like so. And then you twist the smaller contact point off. Take the larger one, twist it back on, like so. And then you tighten it up by putting the wrench over and twisting it till it's firmly in place. Once you start training with the remote training collar, you're going to want to be consistent for quite a while. So you want to be sure that you don't put your remote control down somewhere and forget where you've left it. That's why it comes packed with a handy lanyard that you attach right to the bottom of the remote control. And now you can put this guy in your pocket or you can wear it around your neck so you have it with you constantly.